If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. In this lecture, we will learn how to restart a Unity level on Collision with Unity Visual Scripting. So join me in our project in our player game object we're going to edit the player's script so previously we built out several nodes in this script for example the on trigger enter node when a trigger collision begins if the component that was collided with has the tag death zone, then we logged a message to the console. Instead of logging a message to the console, however, let's reload the level. So if the player collides with the death zone, we're going to reload the current scene. So I'm going to drag an executable wire if the condition is true, and I'm going to call the function load scene. This comes from scene manager and we just need to pass in a scene name argument or value. So select that scene manager which just requires the scene name. So what is the name of our scene? Well if we close our script graph we can see our scene is called sample scene. But we might rename this later and we might have multiple scenes for different levels. So instead of using a scene name literally we're going to get the name of the current active scene. So I'm going to right click in my graph and I'm going to search for the function get active scene under scene manager. This is going to return the current scene and I'm going to get its name because for loading a scene you have to pass in the name. So to get the name of this scene I'm going to right click and add a node and search for get name of type scene and I'm going to connect those two wires then take the result of the scene's name and send it to the load scene function. So the load scene function takes in a scene name which I got by getting the current active scene and then getting its name. So this is going to allow me to restart my level upon collision. I'm going to close my script graph and run the game and this time we can see if I collide with the death zone. Look at that, the level restarts because the scene gets reloaded. So as soon as that collision happens, then the level gets reloaded. Right, so that is how you can restart a level upon the player's death. If you have any lighting changes during the change of levels, then you have to just preserve your lighting. So you can go to the window tab and under the rendering section, select lighting. Here, if you expand this window and select generate lighting, that is going to make sure lighting is preserved even when a scene reloads. So if you do have any lighting changes, then you just have to generate the lighting. All right, so let's try this again. I'm going to clear my error messages, let's see, diagnostic switches are active and may impact performance, which can be configured through the diagnostic section in the preferences window. So I'm going to go into Unity preferences and turn off my diagnostic switches. So that is going to be in the diagnostics section here of my preferences. And I want to turn off my diagnostic switches. So let's see, we have here, we can just reset all of them. And then we can try pressing play again. And okay, our warning is now gone. All right, so that is how we can restart a level when we collide with the death zone. If you want the player to fall a bit before the level restarts, then you can just change the mesh collider that we have. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller in terms of its height. So we have our axes here. I'm going to just make it 0 0.05 instead of 1. Okay, we can test this out again by pressing play. Right, this time I'm going to fall a little bit before I actually then restart the level. So if you don't want to see a bit of that falling happen, then you just have to 
decrease the size of your death zone on that Y axis. Just make sure you don't go into negative scaling. All right, so that is how we can restart a level upon player death. Coming up next, we're going to use a similar format to handle the player's collision with the target. So don't miss the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to handle player collision with another game object, the target object. So join me in your visual graph for your player, your script graph. Here we can see we're checking if the tag of the collider is death zone. And if it's true, we are reloading the scene. But what if we have a collider that is not the death zone. Well, in that case, we should check for what else the player collided with, such as the target. So I'm going to check if the tag equals a different value this time. So we go to the string equals value node. And I'm going to check if it equals target this time. And if true, we can then do the same thing here. We can check if true and we can then load the scene. But we should only check if our string equals death zone if our string does not equal the target or vice versa. So after we check if the death zone is the collider, if the condition is false, then we can have another if statement. And we can check if the tag is target. If that is true, then we can again reload the scene or do extra functionality. For now, let's just reload the scene. So in this case, we are going to first check if our collider was, was the death zone. If true, we reload the scene. If false, then we check again. Is the tag of the collider the target? If true, we load the scene again. So we're checking an extra here tag with an extra if node. For this to work, the target must have a tag. So we have to add a tag first by creating a target tag, then going back to the target and actually assigning it that tag. So then in our player script graph, we can reload the active scene. So let's play our game and let's check if our collision works now if we collide with our target object. So we can hit that and you'll notice we touched it, but we bounced right off. The reason being the target must have is trigger to be true or the player. One of them has to have is trigger to be true. We already set the death zone to have is trigger to be true, so we can't set it on the player. So we must set it on the target then, because only one of the objects in the two can have is trigger set to true for collisions to be processed. So I'm going to replay the game, and then I'm going to check again what happens this time if I collide with the target. And look at that, the level restarts. So this verifies that we've been able to successfully restart the level if the player touches the target because we handled player collision with the visual graph and we set the appropriate collision properties on both of the objects involved in the collision. So we are able to do collision checking with the target this time. So now whether we touch the target or if we fall off the platform, we restart the game. Now we can add more functionality like different platforms. If the user levels up, we can go to the next level. We can randomize our platforms with our visual graphs. So we can have a set of platforms one after the other that are in random locations instead of just one long platform. And we can randomize the locations of these platforms with each level. So that way, each level is different and unpredictable. So there's a lot more that we can add to this game. Congratulations on making it this far, and I will see you next time. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, 
machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.